Hello, and welcome to Veritas Health News. Uh, I'm Dr. Hatimi. Uh, we have a special guest today. We have Mr. Brad Prover from Essential Vapors, the Better Business Accredited Vape Shop in South Carolina, and our special guest today. Hi, Brad. Hey, Dr. Hatimi. How are you? Good, good. Um, so what we're going to talk about, you have a lot of products from the vaping industry. Uh, I see you have, uh, can you walk us through what you have on the counter? Yeah. Basically what I wanted to do today is because uh, the, the potential flavor blend, uh, band that they're talking about implementing here in South Carolina, and they've already done so in three different states, um, talk about the importance of it, um, giving people the option what flavor to choose from which is what has really made the vaping industry so successful. Um, so anyways, vaping got real big several years ago and it's because of all the flavors to choose from. That's what made it so big. Just for example, uh, peanut butter custard or a strawberry custard, uh, fruit loop flavor, which is one I, I personally like. Lemon twist, this one is popsicle flavor. Um, you have lemon bar, watermelon punch, this one's a uh, strawberry and tropical. Um, this one right here is a watermelon lime. So basically uh, having that option as opposed to just a regular tobacco flavored e-liquid um, gives you your best shot at success. Because the reality is we got away from cigarettes to get away from everything cigarette related. Um, so just to have that option and variety to choose from gives us our best shot at success. So when did you start vaping and why? Why did you start it? Um, it'll be five years for me this coming November 7th. Um, because I tried everything else. Um, yeah, I, I tried for about a year, year and a half, quitting on and off. It did not last long, typically never past two days, something like that. Um, just something I wanted to continue to do despite uh, respiratory issues. So um, all of a sudden, uh, one day I went in I uh, got an e-cig, didn't have uh, the best experience at the location I purchased from, but uh, um, long story short, here we are almost five years later. So it's kind of something I got passionate about, which is what made me want to open my own vape store. So I, uh, yeah, that's kind of what got me here. So how did it help you stay off the cigarettes? Um, basically, being a smoking cessation device, it emulates what a cigarette does, but without all the harmful side effects that you get from combustible tobacco, uh, tobacco uh, like uh, carcinogens, um, just no tar. It's just a, a much cleaner way of doing it. It's a vapor versus smoke. So, so what made you open your vape store? I mean, you like vape products, but what made you start getting into this business? Um, just. Traveling around the country and going into different vape shops is just something I got passionate about and thought I could make a difference in doing. Uh, so we opened up uh, 21 months, 13 days ago today. Um, in that time, we become uh, the only uh, Better Business Bureau accredited vape shop in either of the Carolinas. Um, we're also the highest rated vape shop in the entire Southeast United States. So. Can you tell me more about different vape devices we have on the market? Um, well, right now, you have closed pod devices like the Jewel. Um, this is something you may see in some, but not many vape shops. This is something that you'd find more in the atmosphere of a gas station, convenience store. Um, traditional vape shop devices are something where you buy the actual device, it comes with a pod or a tank, you take the liquid and you actually refill it as you vape. Mm -hmm. um, closed pod devices, you end up buying like a two or three pack of cartridges, whatever they come in. When the pot's gone, you just pop it and dispose of it. So what are the new problems facing the vape industry? Uh, there are a lot of hot topics. It's always on the news. Uh, what do you think going on in the industry? Um, I would honestly say lack of due diligence from decision makers. Um, when you do the science behind everything and you look at it like they've done over in England, it's regulated. They've proven the benefit of it versus actually smoking cigarettes. You know, they see the, the how much healthier people they get. And this isn't about starting people on vaping. What it is about getting people off of cigarettes that have pretty much exhausted all their options. So this gives them their best chance. So there's a lot of news about the uh, vaping related health disease out there and then deaths, possible deaths. What's the part of the story they are not telling us? Uh, they tell they blaming the vaping products, but they are not telling the whole truth about it. But 
I'm glad you actually asked that. So this is actually a list that the FDA released from uh, 2018. So there was 1,300 plus locations, retail locations across the United States um, that were cited or warned by the FDA for selling to minors. Um, of all those locations, vape shops only accounted for 5.9% of them. Um, the other 94.1% consisted of gas stations, convenience stores, supermarkets, smoke shops, um, liquor stores, basically places where you see cigarettes being sold. And of all the items on that list of 1,300 plus citations or warnings from the uh, FDA, 94% of those items are actually devices that are manufactured, owned, or partially owned by big tobacco companies. So right now, when you talk about this flavor ban, you, I don't even know how many hundreds of e-liquid companies are out there, but collectively, there's got to be four or 5,000 different crazy flavors they've come up with. Um, when these pod devices like these, they only have like five to 10 flavors. So if you wipe all of that out, the actual flavors, you're stuck with a tobacco flavor. So what's the problem with vaping? Is it these products or it's a different set of products that's causing the lung disease that we are facing right now, the reported case, cases? Um, well, what caused that, if you look at the CDC report, were the cartridges containing THC. It even says right in the reports that THC, uh, the cartridges that contain THC were the cause of death. So there really is, other than maybe dry mouth once in a while, uh, tired, um, they don't really, they come up with nothing for actual e-liquids that you vape and consume at a regular level or pace. The, the big issue with these, the Jewels, uh, the Junos, wh whatever you want to call them, the closed pod pre-filled cartridge devices, is the amount of nicotine that comes in them and the size of the cartridge that it's in. It is a very, very, very high level concentrate of nicotine. So what a clerk doesn't tell you at a location like a convenience store or gas station is how much nicotine is in it. And it's supposed to be consumed in moderation. So you have people that are purchasing it, kids that are getting their hands on it, and nobody knows like that high level of concentration. So when you start vaping that, a pod that's meant to last two, three days in a night, it's gonna cause some health issues over time. But again, that's not traditional vaping. So if you take the flavored um, vaping liquids out of the market, which is the vast majority of the liquids available from vaping, what's left? What has the antenna? That's pretty much what's left right there. Plastic so everything tobacco, is gone. Cigarettes or whatever pod device. So we have a yellow liquid with nicotine, the actual good old cigarette and jewel close pod uh, vaping devices. So what is what what is wrong with this picture? What is what is wrong about it? So if you pass the ban on flavored liquids, so what's left? Why what, what's wrong with this picture here? So if you take away the flavors that have made the vaping industry so successful, yeah, that, that's kind of what happens. I didn't mean to catch you off guard with that. No, that's fine. My, that's my, fine. my point. I like your passion. But... This is what's left. Tobacco flavored e-liquid. Tobacco flavored pod. And tobacco. So this, this is some nasty stuff. So pretty much only this is an alternative. I'm going to say this one, but Big Tobacco and Jewel, which is also owned by Big Tobacco. So I think by banning those, like we are going for back to Big Tobacco. Why Big Tobacco is so worried about these vape products? Why, why they are so worried? What's the reason they are going after these vape products? That's another good question. So it's 13.8 million people that vape here in America alone. 1%, which is 138,000, actually use an unflavored tobacco. So this is a small percentage of people using their vape liquids. So there's over 13,600,000 uh, that use 
what got taken away from them, which is going to cause them to go back to one of those three options, likely this one. But the real issue is this. So when you do the math on that, you have 13.8 million people that got away from smoking by means of vaping. The national average of a pack of cigarettes is $6.16. So if those same 13.8 million were buying that $6.16 pack of cigarettes a day, that ends up being $85,008,000 a day in Big Tobacco's pocket. And that equals 31 billion, 27 million, $920,000 a year. So if you do the math on that, you see who this flavor ban is geared towards. So what we have at stake is $31 billion in revenue. The big tobacco wants to get it back by eliminating your alternatives. That, that, that's pretty big, big money. It's big numbers. Yeah. Even if they're only 25%, right? That's massive <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> if you also talk about the the number of lives being lost so daily today which is 1300 a day that's 480,000 a year and that's just here in the state so this is all a little bit personal for me because uh, my mom's got stage four lung cancer and so yeah yeah it uh and the fact that nobody out there is willing to, it, it's just, when in the hell did common sense become so uncommon? Like we're, we're talking about an, an actual e-liquid with three to four ingredients in it. So three of which we consume daily, whether we vape or not. True. Then you have a cigarette, 599 ingredients that when you light, turns into 7,000 chemicals. 69 of those 7,000 chemicals have the ability to cause cancer and other deadly diseases. I mean, in my clinic, I treat people for smoking cessation and I try all kinds of medications, Chantix, Valbutrin, um, very low success rate. I mean, vaping is probably the only one I can think of that can have a better success rate. And they try to take that alternative away from people. It's, it's it's hard to understand. I guess uh, they don't. They hate to see their customers going to these products, and they want to bring it back to cigarette smoking. Um, so, what can we do to fight this? What can we do to prevent this from happening? Um, basically, I, I'm certain we need the support of those that don't think they have a dog in the fight. So, uh, and what I mean by that is people that never smoked or vape, because when you look at the math. You know, it, it adds up. So, if I look at this, and I do have a dog in the fight, and this isn't about my business, though. This is about people having the choice to do something that helps them. So, I, I don't understand why they would want to take that away unless it's for what I'm certain is actually for why all this is occurring. Because it, it just, it's not regulated here but it is over in the UK where they actually did all the research, see the benefits of it. And I don't mean beneficial in general, but as opposed to smoking. So we don't see this news in Europe. They don't talk about bans or flavored vaping liquids no. or anything like that. So uh, there's an interesting fact you mentioned about 95% of the places that they rated for underage smoking sells to underage minors. They're not vape shops, right? Correct. What are they? They are like, gas stations convenience stores liquor stores supermarkets pharmacies uh, all places that are known to sell cigarettes so they're attacking places the most common places gas stations and so on and so forth so right. they try to eliminate those venues as a point of sale for this kind of vape product is it correct uh that'd be a good assumption yeah yeah i'll say that okay this is this is interesting so uh, so what can we what can we do to prevent this from happening? What can, what what are the next steps, or what can we how we can inform the general population against uh, taking away this alternative, so we don't go back to smoking cigarettes? Uh, we just need people to get involved. So nobody is jumping up several times daily. It's like uh, I believe it was one of the senators on Friday 
in some plea to the governor to do the emergency ban on vaping. For what? <laughs> and he says, uh, what was it? Until we find out what's in these e-liquids. It's the same damn thing that's been in them the last several years. Propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, food flavoring, and nicotine. So when you have black market THC cartridge deaths, keywords black market, um, that's not what the vaping industry is. You know, we are brick and mortar store owners that buy from distributors and wholesalers to sell to customers that come through our front door. We sell legal products. So uh, you, you just can't tie that to the vaping industry. And the other major issue is the teen vaping epidemic. That if you look at everything collectively, points towards big tobacco and the same channels that they use to sell their cigarettes. So again, that's 94.1% of the locations that were cited or warned were all the same places that sell their cigarettes. So that's 5.9% were actual vape shops. So we were, we were the least offender on there. And then 94% of the devices in those same sales either manufactured, owned, or partially owned by tobacco companies. So I guess the big tobacco is the agenda. Um, they, they want to bring back the new customers to their poisonous cigarettes. So um, they have no more alternatives to come and smoke their cigarette, which will be very, very sad. I um, think of 31 billion reasons uh, I'd support that. Right. Well, thank you very much for coming, Brett. You enlightened us. We would love to continue this series and inform our customers and clients and our viewers here uh, about uh, what, what's really going on in the vaping business and, and the true side of the story, the real side of the story. So thank you very much for informing us and opening our eyes to the facts. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Brett. Thanks.